Today we are going to be seeing a real life kiwi chick at Rainbow Springs. This morning we are heading to Rainbow Springs, which is a nature park and conservation center which is located right next to the Rotura Gondola. The first attraction that we're checking out at Rainbow Springs is Kiwi Encounter, which gives us a fly on the wall experience seeing how Kiwi conservation works, but more importantly actually seeing real life Kiwis. After checking a little bit about what the kiwi birds actually eat, we are going to the incubation center, which is basically where the eggs are kept at a really nice temperature so they can develop perfectly before hatching and becoming this actual amazing icon of New Zealand. One of the very fun facts that we learn is that the kiwi birds actually carry a gigantic eggs in proportion to their size. In fact, they actually gave Laura a bag that would represent what size her baby would be if she was a kiwi bird. Oh my god, that was so big. After that, we get a behind the scene look at what happened to the kiwi chicks after they hatch. The kiwi chicks are raised until they weigh about 1 kgs, which is big and strong enough for them to defend themselves in the wild. So this is what they're doing here at the moment, weighing the chicks to see their progress. The reason for all this kiwi conservation is because these kiwi chicks are threatened in the wild by introduced pests like possums and stoats which decreases the populations of kiwi. So what these guys do at Kiwi Encounter is they bring kiwi chicks and eggs into this hatchery, raise them so they're strong enough to defend themselves in the wild and then they get released back into the wild. We get to see the kiwi chicks through different stages of being a chick and because kiwi are nocturnal we see them in a dark and specially designed kiwi house. This is what the enclosure of the birds outside looks like. So once the chicks are big enough and um, you know not a kg yet because if they're kg they go somewhere else apparently. But uh, when they're big enough they get in one of those enclosures and they behave like kiwis in the wild. They are uh, scavenged for their own food. And they also get fattened because, you know, they tweak them a little bit, they put a little bit more food than what they would get in the wild. Needless to say that Raismo Springs is making a big splash in the conservation scene of the area. Speaking of splash, we are heading to the big splash with a really cheesy segue. The big splash is your classic big splash attraction. We are in the boat that is going to go through a little bit of a path before arriving at a massive slope down and making a big, well, a splash at the bottom. This path is actually taking us through New Zealand through the ages between all the forestry, the early Maori, the early settlers from England, as well as, well, the big splash. And here we go. Now, seriously, guys, we know this ride is for kids, but we just couldn't resist. It was just so big, so splashy. And for once, we had beautiful sun in Rotura, so we made sure to enjoy it. Rainbow Springs is more than just kiwi birds and log flume rides. It's a whole nature park with loads of different wildlife to see, surrounded by native bush. It's a really awesome place to be. And there's loads of different walkways going to different areas of the park with different wildlife. So let's get to it. The first area we're checking out are all these huge pools of super clear water. And this water has been pumped from the spring that gave this nature park its name, Rainbow Springs. And to make it more fitting, the pools are filled with rainbow trout. Further down one of the walkways at Rainbow Springs we find loads of enclosures filled with reptiles from both Australia and New Zealand. They're full of water dragons, there's also geckos and skinks which are native to New Zealand, as well as the famous Tuatara which is known for being the three-eyed lizard. We get the opportunity to lap up that fresh spring water from Rainbow Springs itself before moving on with the rest of our nature trail. The next step on our little trail is going to take us to the underwater observatory. This is where we're going to get a much closer look to this huge rainbow trout. The rainbow trout are not native to New Zealand. They've been introduced here by the English settlers because they really enjoy fishing them. So they did release them in many different rivers around New Zealand and now they are one of the most popular fish in the country. All those trouts are amazing, beautifully colorful scale. We also see some brow trout and some tiger trout, which are two other species of introduced trout. But enough about the fish, we're here to see some birds. As we are checking out a paradise shell duck definitely enjoying itself under the shade, we are making our way right inside the first aviary of the day. 
In the first aviary we were checking out, we see loads of beautiful kingfisher birds with their beautiful blue feathers and long beak. And also in this aviary are the North Island kaka, which is a species of parrot only found in New Zealand. The first thing we notice is just how inquisitive these birds are. They're really interested in all our cameras and our backpacks. They're not afraid to get super close to us. And that's just a result of how the birds in New Zealand have evolved in a land that didn't have humans for thousands and thousands of years. The kaka is super entertaining to watch, not only because it's not afraid to rummage through our bags, but the fact that it sort of uses its beak as a third leg. It uses its beak to climb trees and do all sorts of different things. It's really fun to watch. The aviaries give us a chance to have a super close encounter with birds that otherwise would be really difficult to see in the wild because they are getting rarer and rarer. And the reason why these guys are kept here is because they are just too injured to be released back into the wild. But there are more aviaries to check out so let's move on to the next one. The next aviary is the Kea Aviary. If you guys remember when we were on the South Island, especially around Milford Sound, we got to see those Keas in the wild. In fact, this only alpine parrot in the whole world can only be found on the South Island of New Zealand. Now you guys are gonna say that we're not on the South Island of New Zealand and you'd be right, Rotura is on the North Island. But those birds are here because they are just too old or too handicapped to be able to be released in the wild. So these cheeky parrots are staying here. But moving on, we are quickly checking the hatchery where the baby trouts are bred before making our way to the last aviary of the day, which is called the Tui Aviary. Despite the fact that there is many different types of birds, including this lovely little parrot, which is called a parakeet. The parakeet, or kakariki as it's known in Maori, are tiny little parrots which are found in both Australia and New Zealand, and they're super cute. Not only that, but there's a lot more birds to be seen in this aviary, like this huge wood pigeon. It's the native wood pigeon of New Zealand, much bigger than the average pigeon that you find on the street. And finally, we're seeing the absolutely beautiful colours of the tui bird, and they're known for having some really crazy songs. The more we walk around Rainbow Springs, the more awesome attractions we discover. So I'll let you in on a little secret. We've been trying to leave Rainbow Springs since about an hour and a half. But every single time we keep on walking, we find something else awesome to check out. So Laura is getting a bit frustrated because we're never getting on with our day. It is cuteness overload. It looks it's just so so small and fluffy it looks like a little fluffy it's not even like a bird i don't even know how to ex describe it but it's just oh so amazing to see